It's 9 o'clock. Let's get this thing on the road. So, this will be the snow lesson for lesson 22. Um, just double integrals over general regions. So, last class you should have seen things over square regions. So, as a brief review of that, um, let's say we had a function, or let's say we had an integral x plus 2y dA. over region D, where D is described by, let's say, x is between negative 1 and 1, and y is between 0 and 4. So again, the difficulty, the difficult part about double integrals is setting up the bounds. It's important to understand what the region looks like. That's what determines what your bounds look like. So the x plus 2y has no bearing on the double integral bounds. Um, purely just the double, uh, just the, what, how the domain is described. And again, this is a simple rectangular region. So if we plotted this on an xy axis, x would range from negative 1 to 1, y would range from 0 to 4. And we're looking at that region, this rectangular region. And so the way you can set this up <clears throat> yeah, it really doesn't matter what the function is you're integrating, but dA will turn into either dx dy or dy dx, depending on which one you want to integrate with respect to first. I'm just going to pick dx, then dy, which makes my inner integral or my first integral the bounds from negative 1 to 1 and the other integral from 0 to 4. Okay. And if we wanted to put that into Mathematica, just do a double integrate command. So x plus 2y is the function we're integrating. x was from negative 1 to 1. y is 0 to 4. So we let Mathematica do the heavy lifting. It's not going to be terribly difficult to do it by hand. But why not use the Mathematica if we have it? And so what this represents is essentially the volume underneath x plus 2y. So think of the function x plus 2y as it floats above um, the xy plane. So if we actually plotted that, So that is the plane x plus 2y, or z equals x plus 2y, 
over the region of x from negative 1 to 1 and y from 0 to 4. So we're basically looking at the volume underneath this plane. That's what we calculated. Square rectangular regions are the easiest of these types of problems. It doesn't take much thought. You don't have to worry about which order you do the variables in. You just put the numerical bounds on the integrals and you're done. The more interesting example is what we're covering today, which is non-rectangular regions, or double integrals over generic regions. So let's say instead of that, uh, the reason I just gave you, let's do the same integral. But let's make the region a little bit more complex. So all points x, y, such that. Let's keep the x bounds the same. And let's change the y bounds from the equation 2x squared is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 1 plus x squared. And let's think about how this is different. So it's the same function we're integrating, except instead of a rectangular region from negative 1 to 1, 0 to 4, we're making the y the restricted between 2x squared and 1 plus x. <clears throat> so the first step is trying to figure out what this might look like. Um, and we could go ahead and just jump into Mathematica to figure out this. So what I'm going to do is plot the region. And by doing that, I'm just basically going to plot the functions, uh, each the, the end of each inequality. So if I do a contour plot, I'll start writing each side of inequality. So negative 1, except instead of inequality, I'm going to write equals x. x equals 1. Uh, 2x squared equals y. Make sure to do double equals here. And then 1 plus x squared, or y equals 1 plus x squared. So that is just going to help draw all the lines that form the boundary. <clears throat> and so if we try to look at this and figure out what's being enclosed by all these lines, that would be the region between the red and the green curve. So that little sort of smiley face thing. So I'm going to draw that over here. There's 2x squared and actually 2x squared and then 1 plus x squared. And so we are talking about the region shaded here. And this is where choosing whether we want to get respect to x or y first is going to start mattering. Um, again, you can do it any way you want, but some ways are harder than others. So let me, let me do it the, um, the easier way first. And let's integrate with respect to y first. So if you integrate respect to y first, the idea here is that you want to figure out as you move vertically, so as you move parallel to the y-axis in the positive direction, where the region is, you ask yourself what function are you entering first. 
And so if you look, if we come up from below, we're going to enter through this bottom parabola first. And so that will be our first bound, which is that bottom parabola, which is the 2x squared. Then we continue through the region. And we ask ourselves, where do we leave the region? So we enter through the bottom parabola 2x squared, but then we exit through the upper parabola 1 plus x squared. And so that will keep us between the two curves. So notice that's different from the square region. If you're going to get respect to y first here, you entered through y equals 0, and you exited through y equals 4. Which was just a straight horizontal line. That's what made it so simple. But then when we moved to the more curved shapes, it's no longer a line we're entering. We're entering through some curves. So to make sure we get a curvature, we have to use uh, curved bounds, essentially. So we have a functional bound. So with the little foreshadowing, if we integrate this first term with respect to y, actually, let's go ahead and do that. Let's just leave off the dx for right now. If we integrate this respect to y, we get xy plus y squared. And we're going to evaluate that from 2x squared to 1 plus x squared. Having the functional bounds shouldn't scare you. We just sort of plug it in for y. So it'll be x times 1 plus x squared plus 1 plus x squared squared. So you just plug in bounds like you normally do. Upper bound minus lower bound. So x 2x squared plus 2x squared squared. I'm not going to fully expand this out and do this, but you can see that y is completely eliminated. The only thing that's left is the x variable. And so now this will turn into the integral of this expression dx. Which is a single variable integral, something you can do in Calc 2. So the only thing left, though, is to figure out what these bounds are supposed to be. So let's go back to the picture. And we're going to do sort of the same argument that we did before. y went from 2x squared to 1 plus x squared. That's why what's where we enter and exit as we leave. But now we move parallel to the x-axis and we do kind of a similar thing, but also different. So. Once you've established your first integration bounds, you are guaranteed to be between these two curves. So by integrating from 2x squared to 1 plus x squared, we have to be between the two. So right now, we're either down below where we want to be, or we're up in this upper right corner, or up in the upper left corner. Basically, it's carved out our xy plane so that we are stuck now between in those two regions. So the only thing left to do is to make sure that we do not want to be up in the top right. We don't want to be in the upper left. We want to make sure we're just down in this bottom area between the two curves. And since the red lines have already been carved out, we actually don't need to enter the function as much as just recognize that all x has to do is restrict itself from negative 1 to 1. Right here is negative 1, right here is positive 1. By restricting ourselves from negative 1 to 1, well, you might think, wouldn't that take me all the way from the left side all the way to the right side? And the answer is no, because again, we're stuck inside the uh, red curves. So if we just say negative 1 to 1, this is the only region, the internal region is the only one you could be inside. That sort of makes sense. So all we have to do for the last bound is put negative 1 to 1.
if you don't buy it, you could try to say like, oh, well, I'm entering this function, this lower half, which would, let's see, that'd be 2x squared equals y, x equals uh, plus or minus the square root of y over 2. And you might say, okay, it enters through the negative square root of y over 2 and exits the positive square root of y2. But if you do that, your answer is not going to be a number. It's going to be a function that involves y. And so that's a problem. So the idea is you get to eliminate variables down the line as you do these double integrals. And the last integral, this last integral you, you calculate should always just be purely numerical bounds. Otherwise you're not going to get a numerical value. So the correct setup for this is this integral. And then similarly we can sort of put it into Mathematica. So we decided to enter with respect to y first from 2x squared to 1 plus x squared. And then y was, uh, x was our second integral from negative 1 to 1. And if we work that out, we get 32 fifteenths. So how is that different from the last one? Well, the last one, remember, we, we looked over this entire square region from 0 to 4 on the y and negative 1 to 1 on the x. Now we're basically saying we don't want to look entirely everywhere. We just want to look at uh, a, a piece of it. Basically, you can treat the picture we drew here, this blue squiggly mess, as like a cookie cutter that we sort of push down onto this plane here and carve out a slice and the volume of that cookie dough that's left over is essentially the volume that we just calculated, 32 fifteenths. We, we, we could, uh, I guess I could sort of, eh, uh, maybe. So the, the image here would be So it's only, so the blue and the green here is my, uh, my region essentially. And so we're only looking for this sort of partial moon space in here. And from a side view, it's a little hard to see unless I throw some opacity arguments on here. There's a way to make those uh, surfaces a little bit transparent. So that you can kind of see the 3D image in it, but I'm not remembering the command for that right now. But essentially it's this little volume underneath right here. That empty space right here is essentially the 3215s that we just calculated that volume. So this is our cookie cutter and then we sliced into the plane and we got a volume of 32 fifteenths. Okay, 
So we can try now to, if you, we can try to switch the variable um, up. Let's say we want to do the same thing, but instead of doing it with respect to y first, we'll do it with respect to x first. So let me redraw that picture real quick. This is 1 plus x squared equals y, and this one is 2x squared equals y. This region in between. And let's say we, want, we wanted to try to set it up with respect to x first. So we do the same kind of thing, starting fresh now. We're going to move parallel to the x-axis, ask ourselves what do we enter and what do we exit. And I need to draw this a little bit more carefully. Yeah. show something that's important here. So as when we're down here in the bottom region of this region, we sort of enter through the left side and we exit through the right side. But notice that once we get near the top, we're entering through one and then we leave this top parabola. And there's a bunch of empty space. And then we enter the top parabola again and exit the top parabola. So this is going to make it significantly harder in that essentially we have this bottom area where yes we enter the left side and exit the right side of the uh, bottom parabola, but on the top we are entering the left side of the bottom parabola and exiting the left side of the top parabola. If I just go from the left side all the way to the right side in one fell swoop, I'm going to get all this area in here that I don't want. So what that means is we're going to have to break up our integral into three regions. Where we have region 1, region 2, and region 3. And just like in uh, Calc 2, you can separate your integrals as a sum of, over each of the bounds. So you can already see like, how much more complicated it is by integrating with the x first. So this is not a blind choice. You do have to make some forethought and think about, all right, if I integrate respect to x first, what am I entering? What am I exiting? Am I going to have to... Uh, break up my integral to multiple integrals if I do it that way, or could I switch the variables order up of integration, and will that make it a lot easier? But just as an exercise, let's do it once, because there are some situations where you are going to have to break up the integral, regardless of which variable you choose. So it's a good exercise to see if you can do this right. Um, so let's look at this region one, this bottom region right here. We're entering through the left side of the parabola, exiting the right, left side, exiting the right. It's the y equals 2x squared that sort of represents that. The thing is we're in here in respect to x. So my bounds have to be in terms of x. We want x equals 2x equals, right? If it was from like negative 1 to 1, I'd say x equals negative 1 to x equals positive 1. Right now, the function is defined in terms of y, so we do have to solve that for x. Which, if you do that, you get x equals plus or minus the square root of y over 2. So the negative square root would be the left half. And the positive square root of y over 2 would be the top, the right half, or the top of our integral. So that gets us from the left side to the right side. Again, we now have some sort of curved boundary here. Now, we just have to find the numerical bounds for y. 
we can see that as we move vertically through this space, and then we enter through this bottom half, but again, we're, that's already carved out, we just want numerical bounds, so really y bottoms out at zero right here, and it tops out wherever this is, which if you know something about y equals one plus x squared, that's at has a y intercept of one. And that's just the first integral. Now we move on to the next integral. We enter through this side over region two. It's still gonna be that negative square root of y over two. It's still entering the left side of that parabola. But now it's exiting the left side of y equals one plus x squared. So that's gonna be my, that forms my upper bound or the right side of that region. But similarly, we're gonna to have to solve that for x. We get x equals plus or minus the square root of y minus one. So we're gonna exit the left half of the top parabola so it's going to be minus square root of y minus 1 for the top. Then we integrate with respect to y, so we have to find the numeric bounds of the region for the y. It bottoms out at y equals 1, and it tops out wherever these two intersect. So now we have to find intersection points. So where is 1 plus x squared equal to 2x squared? And if you work that out, you get x equals plus or minus 1. But we want y bounds, so then we have to plug that back into the function. Uh, which is 2. So the numerical bounds of that is from 1 to 2 in the y direction. That's region 2. Now region three, at least that one's pretty similar though. It's just using the positive square root, so these positive square root of y over two, positive square root of y minus one, and then similarly one to two on the y bounds. At this point you take a big relief sigh and you ask yourself, did I even do that correctly? Because that's a lot of mess to try to get um, x integrated first. So we could check it though in Mathematica. So we want 32.15, so let's see if it comes out the same. So the first one was x from negative square root of y over 2 to the positive square root of y over 2. And then y range from 0 to 1. So we got that number. Next one, same function to integrate, but now we enter through negative square root two and exit negative square root of y minus one. And then y will range from one to two now. And then the last one, we're going to enter positive square root of y, no, enter through, did I screw that up? I did, these bounds are backwards. As I move to region three, I'm entering the top parabola and I'm exiting the right, the bottom parabola, so to speak. So this should be the square root of y minus one to the square root of y over two. So what, would it, what you've seen to happen was you got the negative of the answer with your bounds backwards, but, so let's fix that. So it's going to be positive square root of y minus 1 to positive square root of y divided by 2, and then y is from 1 to 2. And supposedly, if I add these together, we should get 32 fifteenths. That's a hell of a lot harder than our simple integral 
y equals 2x squared, y equals 1 plus x squared, um, back up here. 32 fifths. A couple things I do want to point out. Notice that this um, upper left region and this upper right region did not give the same numerical values. A lot of people make this mistake when they're doing this problem. They see, a, oh, um, region 1 and region 2 are the exact same shape. They have the same area, they have the same shape. By symmetry, shouldn't those regions be the same? I agree that the areas are the same by symmetry. The problem is we're not calculating the area between these two curves. That was a Calc 2 question. There is some surface floating above this region. Specifically, we have some sort of slanted plane. And so the volume that we're calculating is not symmetric from one side to the other. So the volume that's above, or the surface that's above, are two. So the surface that's above this upper left piece and the, surface, the part of the surface above this upper right piece are not the same shape. So they're two different size volumes, which is what we're calculating, and they're not symmetrical. So you can't just double the, vol the volume. There are some situations where you can use a symmetry argument, but you have to be able to visualize what you're integrating in three dimensions in order to figure out whether you can do any symmetry. I pretty much recommend you don't do symmetry arguments. Just go ahead and set it up, because most likely there isn't a symmetry. By, it, you might get lucky that you could double the regions, but again, we're talking about the volume being symmetrical, not the area of the regions. So make, I want to make that very clear because it's a very common mistake when people um, work that out. All right, let's look at another example. Integrate, integrate over region R, x, y, d, a. And we want the region bounded by y equals x minus 1 and y squared equals 2x plus 6. So again, let's start by drawing this in Mathematica. Let's do a fresh contour plot here. Because I want to just enter the equations using contour plot. y equals x minus 1. And y squared equals 2x plus 6. And let's just plot this from negative 5 to 5. I hope that's big enough. Ooh, just barely. Uh, let's make it negative 66. Okay. So the region bounded by is this little center area. And so let's see if we can do a little bit of foreshadowing here and make a good choice for which variable we want to integrate with respect to first. And again, so because I, I can't draw on this, I'm going to go ahead and copy this over, do a rough sketch. We got some sort of line like this and a sideways parabola. Close enough. All right. So let's look at the two ways we could integrate. We could integrate respect to x first. Let's see, so we're looking at Oops. looking at this region, and if we integrate respect to x first. Notice that no matter where I'm coming in parallel to the x-axis, 
I'm always entering this curve. No matter how high or low I come into this region, I'm always entering that left curve. And that it was the curve y squared equals 2x plus 6. And I move through the curve. And notice that no matter how high or how low, I'm always exiting through this right side, which was given as y equals x minus 1. So, so far, so good. We always enter the left curve. We always exit the right curve. That tells me I don't have to do two separate integrals. Let's see what would happen, though, if I try to integrate with respect to y first. I'm entering through this sideways parabola, but as soon as I get past this intersection point, notice that I'm no longer entering the same curve. I went from entering the parabola to entering the line. And as soon as I see that, I'm like, all right, I have two different lines forming my entry point to the region. I'm going to have to set up two separate double integrals. That's not the path I want to go. Even though, as I move through the region, I am always going to exit the parabola, the sideways parabola. So at least that will be consistent. But my entering is going to be two different functions. So the better choice here, then, would be to integrate with respect to x first. So come back to this picture, if we integrate with the x first, notice we enter the sideways parabola, y equals 2x plus 6. But because we're integrating with the x first, we have to solve that for x, so we get x equals y squared minus 6 over 2. And then we move through and we notice we always exit the y equals x minus 1 line, but again, we have to solve for x because we're integrating with respect to x, so it's going to be x equals y plus 1. Okay, now again, that basically keeps us inside this region, or at least between these two curves. We now have to make sure we only get the stuff in between and not the stuff up here that's between, the, or down there, between the curves. So that's where we restrict y but just the numerical bounds. So the lowest y is, is right here at this intersection point, and the uh, highest y is, is we're at that intersection point. So we are gonna have to solve this system of equations. Let's go ahead and um, just do it in Mathematica, because why not? So the way I'll probably just do this is use the solve command. Solve for x and y, keep it real. And there's our solution points, negative 1, negative 2, 5, 4. So now we can see that my y bounds range from negative 2 to positive 4. So I plop on negative 2 to positive 4. And there's my setup. So again, where are you entering? Where are you exiting? As we move parallel to the x-axis, we're entering through this sideways parabola defined by y squared equals 2x plus 6, so that's going to form my lower boundary, and I'm always exiting this slanted line y equals x minus 1, or x equals y plus 1, and that's going to form my, my other boundary on my integral. Then when I get to y, because I've basically already carved out those curves, 
by degrees squared to x. I just have to make sure y stays inside my region from negative 2 to positive 4. And yeah, we can throw this in Mathematica, but at this stage, it's just an exercise of typing stuff into Mathematica. Um, you should get, I believe, 36. So that takes us, uh, that's pretty much all there is to, to generic regions. Um, again, first step is to draw a good picture of what the region represents. Then once you have that picture, try to figure out whether you want to use with the X or Y first, but again, do that kind of analysis. What do you enter? What do you exit? Um, think about whether you have to do multiple integrals, depending on which variable you choose. Let's go ahead and take a little bit of a preview of next the motivation of my next lesson. Or maybe we can even just set this up in what we have now. Let's say we have a double integral of e to the sine of x cosine of y dA. Over R, where R is between a circle of radius one and a circle of radius two. Centered at the origin. I think we can draw this ourselves. Circle of radius 2, circle of radius 1. And we're talking about the area between. Now, this shape is very symmetrical. It really doesn't matter whether you integrate with the x or y first, it's still going to look the same as you enter and exit. But let's look at how complex this is going to be. Let's just integrate respect to x first, because it doesn't matter. As I move in parallel to the x-axis, notice I start by always entering the left side of the bigger circle. Doesn't seem so bad. As I move through, it looks like I exit the right side of the bigger circle until you get to the donut hole. Then you continue, continue. you don't want to pick up anything in the donut hole. You don't want any of that. So you can't just go all the way from the left side to the right side of the circle. You're going to have to stop, and then you, you, you pick up again, exiting through the right side of the donut hole. And then you exit through the right side of the bigger circle. And then once you get below the donut hole, you're back into just entering and exiting. So let's look at that. We have one region at the top, one region on the side, one region on the other side, and then a region at the bottom. Four different double integrals. And there's no way to make that any easier. If I switch the order up, it's the same thing, just moving vertically. And 
And so this is where polar coordinates comes in and saves the day. Because this inner circle in polar coordinates is just the simple equation r equals 1, and the outer one is r equals 2. That's what those circles are in polar coordinates. And when you're trying to figure out what the polar bounds are entering and exiting, you don't move parallel to the x-axis or move parallel to the y-axis. You move parallel, parallel to the polar axis, which is a radial move. So as you move radially outwards, no matter what angle or approach you take, you always en enter the inner circle. And as you move through the shape, you always exit the outer circle. So by switching to polar, you always enter the same function, you always exit the same function. And so we're going to talk about this next, next lesson. Now we have to do a bunch to convert this stuff in here. But when I, if I get respect to r first, r will just range from 1 to 2. And then theta will rotate from 0 to 2 pi. And that's where we're going to pick up next class. Polar coordinates are incredibly useful for these types of more complicated shapes. This is not something you'd want to try to do in Cartesian. You could, it's not saying it's impossible, but it's a lot more difficult. And you can imagine if you were on a GR, how much time that would take you to not only figure out the four regions, but also run four integration commands in Mathematica and then add them up. So there's a lot of things that could go wrong if you try to stick to Cartesian coordinates. So the moral of the story is, you get a region that's pretty well defined in x and y. It seems simple, pretty basic, and you pick a variable x or y. You see that as you enter and exit the region, you're entering or exiting the same function, so you're not going to have to split up the integral. Go ahead and stick with that. Stick to Cartesian. But if you notice, no matter which direction you come, it's going to be a mess with the uh, regions and how many double integrals you're going to have, that's when you got to make that decision of maybe a different coordinate system is going to save me. So start by drawing the region, figure out which variable you're expected to first, talking about what do you enter, what do you exit, set up the bounds, do the integral, and you've got it. Next class we'll talk about choosing which coordinate system, specifically between polar and Cartesian, and that'll basically um, finish double integrals for us. And then the rest of the class, we kind of focused on doing triple integrals. And we'll have to do three-dimensional analysis of what do you enter and what do you exit. It's really fun. And then we get cylindrical and spherical coordinates and all that stuff. But apart from that, that's about all we got. Um, we will see you guys next time in class. This video will be posted uh, for you to watch, pause, replay as much as you want. Uh, and I'll be posting that link, or it should be the same link actually on Blackboard. Uh, enjoy the weather, make some good snowmen. That's all I got. Peace.